Welcome back. Financial cooperation and artificial intelligence were some of the main topics discussed at the Boao Forum for Asia. The governor of the central bank said China is ready to build a more effective financial safety net and minimize risks. During a panel on AI, companies discussed areas for cooperation, potential breakthroughs, and some of the risks. Another panel covered green development with a new report on sustainable development. Chen Tang has more. The report says global power generation-related carbon emissions hit a record high in 2022, reaching 13.2 billion tons. And Asia has the world's largest energy demand and carbon emissions. Experts have pointed out that financing is a crucial factor in future green development. In Asia, over the past one year, financing has gone up sharply. We've seen that the number of member nations of the Asian Development Bank has increased significantly from 59 to 109 since September 2023. The bank approved 235 projects with a total financing value of $44.8 billion. The total capital involved in these projects is about $150 billion. So the financing event has obviously seen a change. Some experts believe the government should play a key role in bringing in more private players who are engaged in green financing. I'm very sure that uh, the public sector or the public finance has a very important role to play to create that enabling environment for private sector to come and do the business when it comes to doing the renewable energy or clean energy uh, projects. The report says the level of development in power grids in Asia varies greatly. While Northeast Asia is way ahead, the penetration rate of power grid intelligence in some South Asian nations is pretty low. So there are still many challenges ahead for Asian nations to cooperate. Chen Tong, CGTN, Boao, Hainan Province. And for more insight on the Buao Forum and sustainable development in Asia and China, let's bring in Michael Shank. He's Director of Engagement for the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance, as well as an adjunct professor of sustainable development at NYU. Welcome to the show. Good to be here. So the Buao report says significant strides have been made in green development in China. I'm wondering, do you agree how successful have the efforts been in both China and Asia? Listen, every country around the world needs to scale up its effort to be more sustainable. We know that the sustainable development goals aren't on track for 2030, and that is a global opportunity to lead. We also know that China is committing to this new trio of industries, whether it's solar or electric vehicles or lithium batteries. I know in the National People's Congress this month, there was a conversation about that transitioning off clothing and furniture and machinery, et cetera, appliances towards solar EVs and batteries. That commitment to scaling up the green tech revolution and then leading globally, as the World Bank head said himself when he was in China this month, Mr. Bunga, saying, hey, China, way to lead already in this space. There's a real leadership opportunity globally, especially as we see the U.S. and EU tech inward become more populist in their agendas, there's a real opportunity to lead on the African continent, in Southeast Asia, South Asia, Latin America, South America, in helping these countries and economies leapfrog in the transition with the solar, the EVs, the lithium batteries, as the National People's Congress has uh, conversed about this month. And in tandem with this push that China says it wants to make, how important is it for local private investment to help drive a push to sustainability? Should the government be doing more to bring in private players and encourage green financing? We need financing on all fronts. So if we really want to finance this transition, it's a trillion dollars globally every year. Now, the opportunities with that trillion, the return on investment is high. Economies are stronger, they're thriving, people are living, they're not dying. And it turns out they're happier. If you look at the World Happiness Report, also just released, the countries that perform highest in happiness also perform highest in sustainability. Those are the countries that have the most sustainable development rankings, the highest rankings in the Sustainable Development Index year after year after year, unsurprisingly, Nordic countries. So showing the correlation, there's a real opportunity. You have happier citizens as a result. You have more thriving economies as a result. And of course, the planet is better too. So there's a win-win-win across the board there. But yes, finan financing on all fronts, and as we've seen in COP28 in Dubai, the Loss and Damage Fund, just as one example of financing, getting commitments in the millions when we really need the billions and trillions stepping up. But again, the ROI, the return on investment is strong.
I like the fact that you bring happiness into it, but there are challenges that exist. And I'm wondering, what are some of the biggest challenges? Because Asia is a big emitter of carbon emissions. Sure. And 2023 saw the highest emissions globally on record. 2023 saw the hottest year on record globally. Now, the U.S. needs to play here, too. And I love the partnership idea, the people exchange that was mentioned on an earlier segment. We need more exchange, not less. And so the subsidies of local markets, you know, there's concern. I know China went to the WTO about U.S. subsidies for EVs and kind of boxing out Chinese batteries in EVs in the U.S. for incentives, et cetera. And unfortunately, or fortunately, um, for all local markets globally, countries have often subsidized their local markets. That's not new. There's precedent for it. And as Bloomberg editorial board said recently this month also, the WTO is dead. So I don't see any major challenge to those kind of domestic subsidies anytime soon. Uh, but the opportunity for the transition to lead, because we're not seeing the U.S. and EU lead globally in these developing economies, the real opportunity here for China to lead is, is apparent. And I think that's why the World Bank president, Mr. Bongo, was like, listen, there's this real opportunity to lead in the green tech revolution, whether it's solar, EV, lithium batteries. How do we do it fairly and freely? Of course, we need to do it sustainably so that it's good for the makers of all those things, too. Uh, but there's a real opportunity to lead, and it needs to be done now so we can reduce emissions ASAP because uh, they're killing us to the tune of $9 million a year. So let's save some lives, let's make people happier, and let's help these economies thrive. Mm. And to that end, the IMF's managing director has said China could see additional growth of 20% over the next 15 years if it conducts reforms, including shoring up its property market, addressing domestic consumption, and the regulatory framework for AI and electricity pricing. How imperative are these changes? Yeah, reforms are good, and I would agree with the IMF head on this front in, in specifically. But like, if you look at some of the growth that's happening in Thailand and in Singapore and in Indonesia and in Malaysia, just on EVs, for example, incredible growth. Right. So how could and if China does lead in Southeast Asia, I know it wants to, I know it is doing so, uh, it could be a real market force, especially as the U.S. turns inward towards more populism. All these markets are waiting for leadership, are waiting for partnership, are waiting for financing, are waiting for this new trio of industries to replace clothing, furniture and appliances with solar EV and batteries. So again, this real opportunity. And yes, to the reforms, but that seems easy in terms of what lies ahead in terms of the opportunity here to lead.